Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Banner Saga 2 with me, Notorious BLT. We're gonna oh, we're gonna do this uh, trainee thing. Well, come on in and let's have a look at you, Sven. The trainer says. After a quick assessment, he says, "Yep, looks like you could stand to learn a few things." I've got five challenges for you, and if you can finish them all before we get to Airbrang, well, I'll let everyone know you've impressed me. Ha! Sven's laughter is full of phlegm. Let's start, let's start with a few of the basics. You think about what he's saying. Feel up to a challenge? I'm ready. Then we begin, Sven barks. So I'm thinking, I might have actually been able to win that first combat with Rook only, because he gets to act after every single, oh, after every single other dude. Click on an objective marker to see detailed ins uh, blah, 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 instructions. Use heavy impact to damage three enemies at once. When hack on or a, any Varl warrior attacks a target, all enemies adjacent to the target also take damage. I don't think that's true for everybody. Kill an enemy using puncture. If your archer is stationary and the enemy's armor is damaged, kill him. Form a shield wall. Position your raider adjacent to an ally. Well, I can't reposition anybody, so I guess we're ready. Yep. Alright, see so what these guys do. Kills, grant self, and adjacent allies will. Okay. You have a strength of eight. No abilities. Stop poking my Varl, you prick. I mean, you're just going to straight up murder these dudes. Come at me, bros. Fuck. Yes, group up, please. Nah, just hit him for half. No, you want to come over here. Actually, wait a minute. If I do heavy impact... Who's next? Wait. What? This guy is next. Okay. Why don't you... Beat this guy's armor into the dirt? Yes, continue doing that. Oh, hack on. Uh, heavy impact is your... Yeah. Please just don't kill this guy. I really just would like for him to... Uh... Yeah, I I'm basically just gonna... Like, I'm gonna wait for him to... Oh, fuck. Oh, okay. You know what? Keep stabbing my, my shield boys. That's fine. They're fine. No! Don't stab my archer. Stop poking! It's very annoying. I'm basically trying to get a thing so that I can kill somebody with puncture. Hacky boy, what do I want you to do, dude? Murder this man. No! Don't stand next to me, you dick. Shit. I'm trying to get one of these guys with puncture so that I can, you know, do the thing that the game is asking me to do. Just poke somebody that can... That, that's okay. Well, not that they're okay, but... I think you know what I mean. Who's next? Then it's hack on, then it's you. Fuck. Alright. I want you to block anybody from getting over here. 
They can't really hurt Hack on that much, I don't think. Who's next? Alright, so that guy is next. Uh, he can get to the archer. Um, move here, though. He can still get to the archer. Fuck. Just poke. Not, no, no, no. There. Kill somebody with puncture. Bang. Success, you have completed your, your training. Excellent. Yes. Wonderful. Oh, you're going to give us extra now, huh? That's pretty sweet. Check uh, check back frequently for more challenge eh, challenge sessions or spar anytime you like. Okay, now I got to talk to you. What's up? Ah! You watch for a moment as Ivan, Juno's apprentice, and the mender found nearly uh, dead at Ridgehorn moves his staff in a complex pattern, repairing some armor. Not a bad festival trick, right? I've seen worse, and I've seen better, like yours back in Borisgard with stopping Bellower. Probably good it did. Ivan watches you studying your face before speaking. I know the pain in your eyes. Remember when we left Sigurholm? I just knew we uh, we could wait one more day. Juno would arrive. And you were wrong. Like you are now. You saved hundreds of lives. Each one grateful for your leadership. And all it cost me was my daughter. I'd give anything to have her back. <coughs> Excuse me. Ivan's face falls. <coughs> you don't know how dangerous that thinking can be. What do you mean? He seems to shake himself from some distant memory. Nothing, just believe me. You protecting these people, seeing them to safety, it's the only hope for the future. Ivan picks up the repaired armor, hitting it with his staff to test it. I'm glad we could talk, but I need to check on the fighter uh, who was wearing this. Mmm, yes. How badly are we injured here? One more of your units is injured. Injured units can still fight, but have a penalty to max strength equal to the number of days wounded. They heal as time passes when resting at the camp. Oh, fuck me. So we got three days of rest. I don't think I want to take the full three days. Let's take, like, two. Some of your units are ready to be promoted or improved. Use the hero's tent to upgrade them. Rook, are you one of those units? Yes. As hack on as is Ivor. Oh, Ivor. Fuck yes, dude. Excuse me? Kurt uses experience in battle to issue commands. Or Tempest. You already have the headbutt. Would Tempest be a good addition? I don't remember because your strength is pretty goddamn high. What if I did Hack On instead? No, ah, ah. Choose a second ability. Honestly, like, I'm a big fan of Tempest. But also... Man. Forge Ahead is really good. Then again, I suppose it... <sighs> Motorcycles. I suppose it depends on how much... Yeah, you have eight. I think we're gonna beef you up with some Tempest. Uh, yes. You don't have any stats maxed. I think we're definitely gonna max out your armor and your strength. Alright. Where'd I ever go? There he is. 
Hack on. Let's beef you up as well, buddy. Your armor's already maxed out. Let's give you this. Let's give you this. You're an armor-breaking machine. Rook. I don't think I can promote you. No. I need more renown. That's fine. Okay. We've rested for two days. Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. Let's go. Everybody should be happy with the rest that they got. Let's move it. Clansman Forge plus 16. You look at all the food freshly placed in the supply carts. What's all this about, you ask Godleaf? The clansmen are trying to help as much as possible now, she says. Whenever they can, they'll forage for nuts and berries or fish and hunt. She hands you a piece of fruit. They may not know how to fight, but they can keep us alive by keeping us fed. Dude! That's great! Ooh! Shots from one of the rear longships grab everyone's attention. The quick construction is proving faulty, and the ship is taking on water fast. With dredge on the bank and all other ships almost at capacity, you consider your options. Bank the longship for repairs. We'll fight the dredge. Ropes are th <clears throat> thrown to those aboard the sinking longship, and it is hauled uh, toward the bank. A few dredge appear, but keep their distance. Their glowing eyes and strange hums unnerve the caravan as workers make necessary repairs. Fuck. I thought that was light in the background. It's actually just fog. The crowd begins to cheer from one of the longships as a man struggles with his fishing net. As his catch nears the surface, some uh, some voice concerns. You're close enough to make out a large shape and what looks like fur or hair in the net. He's probably pulling up a dead animal. If I fire an arrow to the mass, it might puncture it and cause, like, corpse gas to, to come out. Um. Shit. Ay, ay. Then again, maybe they have hairy fish. Who knows? Bear cub, shouts the man with the net. Long dead. What's it mean? Superstitions blow across the ship like a gale. Talk of plagues and famine make eyes go wide. You notice Bulwark at the bow of his ship, staring at the cub and brooding more than usual. Fuck. Maybe we should stop. Let's rest. God damn it. Also, I guess we can see if there's more training to happen. All right, let's have a look at you, Sven. The trainer, okay? Uh, what can you show me? Plenty, Sven says, walking to a large tent. Try to keep up. Knowing how to not hurt yourself, children can uh, can do that, Sven says. Show me you can actively mark prey. You think about what he's saying. You feel up to the challenge? I'm ready. Then we begin. Mark prey. So he's probably going to ask me to use my regular, not my regular ability, but my, my ability that causes the people to hit and shoot. Yep, there's there's Rook. What are my objectives? Use mark play. Play. Mark prey and have four allies strike an enemy. Right? Stone wall. Oh, shield wall. Shield wall. Pokey. Okay. I forgot about the archer. I didn't see you guys back there. Shit. That's a lot of people, dude.
Strength is not very high. Uh... Why? I could have broken armor. What the fuck am I doing? Get in there and be a giant distraction. Okay, please let, 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 let Rook go next. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Wunderbar. That's a lot of freaking dudes, man. So part of the reason I wanted to do this was because I wanted to uh, see how much renown we would get. If any, you know. Dude, that's a really good amount of renown. For one little battle like this? Hell yes. Okay, let's rest. Morale improved. Ah, great morale. Liking that? Okay. Our heroes. Uh, I wanted to improve Rook. Promote. Uh, huh. Let's get you some breakage. Uh, I'll, I'll look into giving you other abilities later. I just, I get the feeling they really want us to uh, level up our people since they lowered the renown cost. I could be wrong, but I think that that's the case. I'm thinking we might also stop here. Time on the cramped longships is proving too much for the children. They're climbing ropes, interrupting rowers, and constantly leaning over the sides to touch the water. Some fallen clansmen look annoyed. Remind everyone that this will soon be over. Say nothing. Keep your kids by your side. We'll, uh, we're at war until air barang. See, the thing is, I am I feel like I want to pick the things that I think Rook would say because he's just recently lost his daughter, so he's feeling a little, like, impatient is the impression that I get. You keep your kids by your sides, Rook, until Aberang. Some mothers give you irritated glances while a few varls smile in your direction. Regardless, there is no denying the children are safer by their parents' sides. And no effect on morale. Wonderful. Honestly, that was uh, one of the things that I was kind of worried about, to be totally frank. I love how we just still have that one fighter. Smoke from the village catches everyone's attention, and the long chips begin to slow. I doubt these scraps of wood were floating on, uh, were floating on can hold many more, Ivor says. You feel the governor's gaze on you, and he sh uh, slowly shakes his head. Want me to turn my back on them? They might resupply us for our trouble. I ever cocks an eyebrow, and who will resupply them when they realize the trade routes are blocked by dredge? You give him a look and wave the ships uh, to shore. When the ships land, you and a few others rush toward the smoke, but the closer you get, the stranger the situation. There's no sounds of battle or people panicking to put, the, uh, to put out fires. Keep going, Bulver growls. We'll, you, uh, we'll see what the, uh, what the dead are carrying. The Varl's comment defies tradition, but so do many things about him. Shout out to the village and investigate. A barn is the only thing burning. No one is around. Unusual, Oddleaf says. Some kind of trick? Feels that way. Let's get back to the ships. Maybe the fire trapped someone else. While everyone looks for buckets and water, some varl carry a full yox through, the, uh, through to douse the barn. The door and front wall are soon smoking charred remains, easily kicked open. Unfortunately, there is nothing of note inside. 
After a slow trudge back uh, to the others, Ruga stands aboard a ship shaking his head. Some thieving bandits ambushed us and took off in a supply ship while you were on your do-good mission, he says. We'll be even more cr uh, crowded now. Uh, glad you're at the helm. Oh, fuck off, dickhead. Alright, we like that. Some forage. A large clump of hazelnut trees looks like a good place for clansmen to stretch their legs and gather supplies. Once on land, the children laugh while kicking around leather-wrapped balls of rags. You notice a varl on the edge of the clearing silently staring into the woods. He's watching a lone dredge grunt stalk a squirrel. Might be a hundred of them in these woods, the varl's, uh, the varl whispers. The, yeah, the varl's whisper is still loud enough to scare the squirrel and alert the grunt. It looks at you and the varl before slowly backing up. Watch the dredge. Track it if possible. The grunt runs away. You silently follow, but stop when you discover a clearing with a few small animal bones lay, uh, laying about. Meager meals for one. Near the bones stand a tiny statue of a dragon, and terror courses down your spine. You want to get away from it. Fight your fear and take the statue. Each step towards the statue adds to your doubt until your hand wraps around it. You realize you've been holding your breath and sigh with relief. Do. Back on the ship, the clansmen discuss your whole experience along with all the nuts they collected. Smiles appear on most faces. Yay! Ooh, five renown. Oh! Carved rock on a vacant island. Asilai's godstone almost looks lonely. Dude, I love the voice acting in this game. It's very sparse. But it's, and when I say the, the sparse voice acting, I'm talking about, like, the, um, them actually saying words. Because, like, you hear people going, like, ah, she's more beautiful than the songs say. But you hear people going, like, ah, ooh, when they get hurt. But, like, you don't necessarily hear them talking that much. And I love the voice acting that they do have. happen. Ah! Click it. The clansmen of the Varl are admiring the godstone when you notice some are missing. It's Bulwark and his ravens, uh, Elio says. They looked rather upset by my music and all the singing. He shrugs. If they'd rather hang around uh, that large cart instead of joining us, I won't take it personally. But come closer. Let me introduce you to uh, Azalee, the god of streaming waters. She is the curves of every river, a guide for those of us traveling unfamiliar lands. The scald runs a finger over small etchings uh, in the stone. Inscriptions from all those who were lost, but found a way back home with her help. Listen to more of Leo's tale. Search around the stone for anything of value. You spend a fair amount of time looking at all the baubles left by other visitors, but nothing strikes you as valuable. As you return to the pitched camp, Leo pulls you aside. We all have our strengths, and mine is in stories that may very well benefit us all in these troubled times, he says. They're at least worth a listen. He doesn't sound upset. It's a simple request. Yeah, you know what? I will absolutely fucking listen to you, dude. A number of clansmen and fighters is shown here. Your caravan... If your caravan is assaulted en masse in a war situation, it is the fighters that protect the clansmen while your heroes fight a tactical battle. It is important to keep enough trained fighters available, but keep in mind that fighters consume more supplies than clansmen and are less effective at foraging. So we want to have a balance, is what, it's, is what that means. Speak to Sven in the training tent to start training some of your clansmen into battle-ready fighters. Oh, so it's a different mechanic. That's pretty cool. Well, come on in. Let's have a look at you, Sven, the trainer says. The trainer looks past you at some boys and girls eager to learn. Teaching fighting to the young, Sven uh, muses. They won't go back to hunting and foraging for food, you know. Sure you want to go through with this? We need the protection. Sven blows, uh, all the air, uh, blows out all his air through flapping lips. Then let's get it done. How many do you want fighting for you? That's a lot. Let's go with 50. 
I, Sven says, and leave most of the others with their families, uh, where they belong. He starts calling a few forward and turns to you. Good food for the day or training. Or got food for the day for, uh, yeah, for the day of training? Sure. Consider it done, Sven whistles through his missing teeth. Ah, okay, so that, that, that eats up supplies, but we improve morale. That's pretty cool. Hack on. What you got to say, buddy? Two of uh, look deep in conversation, but Ivor catches your eye and waves you over. So they've all armed themselves and are running for something, but what? Hakon's becoming a uh, dredge scholar trying to understand the motivations of our enemy. It's strange that we've never seen their women fight until recently. Good thing, too, we might have lost the Great Wars. You think about what to say. What happened back then? Great deal of killing on both sides. Imagine uh, waking up to dredge attacks every night. Back then, the sun actually set. You'd wake up to a sound and see nothing but glowing eyes around you. Yingvar probably told you we never got close to pu uh, pushing them back to the depths they call home. Actually, Ivor has never said much about the past. Oh? Ivor says nothing, just holds Hakon's stare. Well, he's probably got more stories than you could hear in your short life. Juno says there's a darkness coming. But what Valkas say and mean aren't always the same. They speak in riddles and prophecy. Still, it might explain why the dredge are everywhere, like someone kicked an anthill. Maybe whatever's coming hit them first. Or maybe it's just a new tactic for a new war. If they've learned to crack the ground and call a giant serpent, then we're all dead and just don't know it yet. Has anyone ever talked to a dredge? Both of our look at each other. The rumors that some have tried and been killed in the process. A lot of nonsense. Skulled tales about the sound of a dredge's voice making your skin fall off. So there's been no communication with the enemy. Is that normal? We were too busy killing to worry about the fireside chat. Besides, they only ever uh, make warbling sounds. I guess if anyone has talked to them, it'd be the Valka. But good luck getting them to give you a straight answer. Leave you two to figuring out the big issues. You should know the clansmen have been talking about us killing women and children, dredge or not. It's not sitting well with everyone, which is probably the way it should be. I say if it's us or them, we make sure we're still standing. I'm bothered more by, by your decision to destroy Ironertoff's bridge. Let it go, Hakon. It was the best decision at the time. To collapse a bridge that cost thousands of Varl lives to build? If it weren't for your damn horns, Yingvar, I'd swear you were an overgrown human. The two giants begin trading insults, and you step away, letting them vent. Hey! That's not good. That's not good. Let's continue on our way. I wonder what's going to happen when we hit this hill. And also, there's a lot of fog. The river suddenly gets rough, and the water is, much, is moving much faster. Rowers try their best to avoid rocks, but the long ships weren't built for such maneuvers. Each impact is jarring. The ships rock, and a few oars snap between stones and each other. But remarkably, the fleet survives with only minor damage. As the river calms, several parents thank you for reminding them to keep their children close. I fucking bet. <laughs> I would too, goddammit. Birds! Birds! <laughs> the banner's disappearing, dude. The sheer cliffs and boulder-strewn waters of the southern bank dictate the longship's course. The droning sounds of the dredge ascent, uh, or accent their quicker pace as they follow your ships along the northern bank. Dust and mist make it hard to see ahead. A hissing, uh, rumbling noise grows all around. Waterfall shouts the sharp-eyed nid from the, uh, from the bow for a longship. Oars instantly reverse and you nearly lose your balance. Oh, fuck. Did we not know about this? I think I guess maybe we wouldn't. Uh, okay. This is new, I guess. 
Yeah, this looks new. This looks very new. Ah! Stop! Stop the freaking caravan, dude! Camp! Camp! Do something! Ugh! <laughs> the approaching waterfall clouds your thoughts. The ships struggle, but their light weight makes them able to pull away from the river's deadly current. The thought of what more, uh, what more clansmen weighing down the ships would have uh, done makes you shiver. The remaining, oh, the remaining ship's rowers pull hard, heading for the dredge-lined northern bank. In their haste, the vessels smash against sharp, spl uh, against sharp split rocks as they push towards the shore. Some fighters are thrown from the boats, sinking in mud under the weight of their armor. Oh, fuck. No! The long ships are too spread out to command a, a unified landing. Amid the chaos, you look at those nearby. Gris, a stout Varl warrior, and a few others like uh, like him look ready to rush the dredge. Bulwark and his company are close to you, hauling their sealed cart off the ship. You consider your options. Charge! Everyone in the longships jumps out as one. Rocks from slingers crack off shields, and soon you're engaged in, a ca in, in the chaos of battle. Fuck yes. Dude, this game is so freaking wonderful. Look at all these dudes. Just freaking look at them all, man. All right, y'all, that's going to... What? Actually, what is this thing? The slightest glimpse of this ruined dragon statue keeps most at bay. Knockback on strength greater than three, plus two will per kill, plus one strength. That is freaking great. But anyhow, that's going to be it for this episode, folks. Hope you all did enjoy it. And if you did, you know what to do. That's going to be for me, Notorious BLT. Hope you have a fantastic day, and I will catch you all next time. Bye-bye, folks.